Hey everyone, it's Adam from The Army Painter and today I have a very fun tutorial. We're going to be taking a look at the paints found inside the brand new Zombicide 2nd Edition paint set to commemorate the new edition of the game. And I'm going to show you some speed painting tips using only the paints found inside. But we are going to use some of the products from the Army Painter range. We're going to use the color primers. The color primers are a great way to speed up your time because it applies a base coat and a primer coat in once. So before we get started priming our models, let's head outside. Whenever you're using our color primer sprays, we do recommend that you go to a well-ventilated area. And what's a better well-ventilated area than outdoors? Make sure it's a nice day, it's not rainy or too humid, and you should be safe to spray. Now, before you get started, make sure you give that can a really good shake. To help add some variety to our survivors from the set, we're gonna be using different color primer sprays. We're using Wolf Gray, and we'll just begin spraying a nice, smooth, even base coat. Just like that, your base coat is complete. Now when you're finished, a great way to clean the nozzle is to turn the can upside down, activate the trigger until pigment stops spraying, and that'll keep your nozzle clean for future use. As you can see when we were outside priming these models, we're gonna be painting up some survivors today. And with the survivors, because they are the heroes of the game, instead of just using one color like we did with all of the abominations and the zombies, we use necrotic flesh for that tutorial, I like to mix it up a little bit and take a couple batches of the survivors and use a couple different colors from our color primer spray range. So let's get to it. Now it's time to start base coating our models. So why don't you grab your favorite brush, some clean water, and your wet palette, I certainly love to use mine, and let's get right to it. So we're gonna start off with Bunny G here, and this is probably my favorite model in the entire lineup. I love this character, I love her bunny mask, and she's just such a cool character. So I'm gonna pick a color, it doesn't really matter what we start with, I'm gonna use Filthy Suit here. I'm gonna paint in her pants with this, this is a good gray color. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of this to my palette, like so, and I love using my wet palette, especially when I'm batch painting because it does preserve those paints and just extends the lifetime of the paints a bit. I've taken a little bit of water from my rinsing glass. I've applied it to the paint. I'm just gonna thin it down. I'm gonna load up the bristles like so and just begin blocking in all the areas that I want to be gray on this model. It's just zoomed in a little bit here and I'm just gonna apply this base tone all over the pants here on Bunny G, just very simply. Taking my time, I'm, I'm not too concerned with painting outside the lines here because I do have some other colors to paint. Just trying to be as quick as I can and get a nice smooth base coat. If I need to, I will come back and apply a second coat. I'm just gonna pick the next color and I think I'm just gonna try and paint this t-shirt that Bunny G is wearing white. Now, what I do, and this is a little tip for those of you at home, is if I'm painting white and I am doing something like a speed painting model like we're doing here, I'll mix in just a little bit of gray. So I have mixed in a little bit of filthy suit. And the reason that is, is if I do wanna come back later on after I apply a wash to this model and highlight, I don't have pure white underneath. Yes, the wash will darken it down, but it'll just give me some added tonality and make my life a little bit simpler down the road. Moving on, I'm gonna paint in the skin tones on the models. And for this, I'm using Survivor Skin. It comes in the set and you could make any skin tone you want. You can mix in a little bit of white to make it more fair. You could even mix in some of the brown to make it a darker skin tone, however you choose. And I might do that on some of the models to add some variation. So I'm very simply finding the exposed skin on the model and I'm applying a simple base coat of Survivor Skin. Take your time here. You don't want to paint over the areas that you want to remain a certain color, like the denim jacket that we have here. We're going to leave that, that nice blue color from our priming stage. If you do mess up, you can always add a bit of ultramarine blue from our color primer range, or you can just cover it up with some wasted jeans which is a very close match. 
Now, here's a tip for when you are batch painting or speed painting models. Try to work with a limited palette. Pick a few colors that you can use across the models that you're painting. For instance, you grab a blue or even a brown. These are great colors, somewhat neutral colors that you can use to paint in pouches or belt straps or even trousers, shoes, what have you. And that way you're just using that one color and painting it across different models as you're trying to batch paint and speed paint these models. Let me show you right here. So you can see what I'm talking about here. So I've got Bunny G and this little guy. So I've already painted the gray tone on this rock that he's standing on top of. We have the matching skin tones, same here. Gray boots, skin tones. I like to paint the skin tones over the hair before I paint the hair color in. Just makes it a little bit easier. So now I've got some dirt spatter. This is a nice rich brown color. And I'm gonna use this across all three models. I'm just gonna find the areas where I think would be brown, like this strap here on Bunny G, for example. And once I'm done with that, I'll find some other areas, like maybe the boots on this young man here. Just paint them in brown. He's got a lot of pouches on him, actually. So we'll just find all the areas that we want to paint brown. And by doing this, we're going to save a lot of time. So that way we're not bouncing back and forth between different colors on the same model. We can use the paint that we have and that we're working with to save loads of time. Now, it's important to note that we are speed painting here. We're not worried about all of the fine details. We just want to have a very nice and presentable model for the next time you have your friends over to play Zombicide. So you want to block in some colors. You want to paint within the lines, but you don't want to get too caught up in the details. You'll notice that I'm not painting in any of the eyes. I'm not painting any insignias on these models. I'm just applying some nice, smooth base coats get some really strong coloration so that when you're standing at the tabletop, it adds a little bit of excitement. It helps you immerse yourselves into the game a little bit more. Now, this wouldn't be a speed painting tutorial if we didn't have some fast forward footage, some time-lapse footage. So I'm just gonna dig right in. I'm gonna start painting these models, tune in. I'm gonna play some music for you in the background and enjoy.
while this is a speed painting tutorial and we're trying to get very efficient and effective results very fast, we're not going to go ahead and apply highlights in later stages. What we are going to do is we're going to apply a wash. Now, picking the right wash for the models is really important for the models that you're painting. Now, for instance, when we're painting these survivors, I think strong tone is a good neutral wash. So we're gonna use a little bit of this quick shade strong tone. We're gonna to apply it all over the models and this is going to work its way into the recesses and into the details to add some realistic depth and shading. Now the Zombicide second edition paint set comes with three quick shade washes, flesh wash, dark tone, and the one that we're gonna be using today, strong tone. So I'm just gonna shake this up and apply a few drops to my hard palette here. You can find this palette inside some of our box sets like the Hobby Toolkit as well as some of the paint sets. I'm gonna get a little bit of water from my rinsing jar and I'm just gonna thin it down a little bit. You can see I already based in the base here in just pure black paint. You can base it in any color that you want. You can even add some basing materials, but I just want to go simple because this is a tabletop board game, but you can do it any way you like. Now I'm just going to start applying this strong tone from the top down, allow gravity to do its work. Now for those of you who have never used a wash or who are new to painting, washes are designed to flow over the raised areas of the model and into the recesses. And you can actually see it happening as I apply this wash. You can see it just work its way into the folds of the shirt, like so. Now, because of the way that it's designed, it will begin to pull up in the recesses, sometimes a little bit too much. You can just dab some of the wash off of your brush, soak it in, and then move it around before it dries. You do have a good bit of working time with these washes because they do not dry quite as fast as a standard acrylic paint. So just go around the whole model and apply this wash, and this is gonna add some nice realistic depth and shading to the model. This is really where the speed painting comes to life. Now you may have noticed I am using a larger brush here. I am using a monster brush from the Army Painter War Painter range. I like to use a larger brush because you do wanna keep that wash inside the bristles. You want to keep some of it in there and you really want to load it up so that you can really work the wash into and around the details of the model. So definitely recommend try using the largest brush you have. Highly recommend the monster brush, the Wargamer monster brush from the Army Painter. Okay, and now we're just going to allow this quick shade wash to dry across the models. It should take about 25 to 35 minutes, and depending on how many models you're painting at once, the first model might be dry by the time you're finished. Now, this would be a great time if you did want to apply some highlights. You could go back and reinvigorate some of those base tones with the same color and then apply some more highlights afterwards. But this is not a highlighting tutorial. This is a speed painting tutorial. So for the better part of what we're trying to do, we're done. Now, I would highly recommend applying a coat of our anti-shine matte varnish or Aegis Soup satin varnish over top. Now, what that's going to do, it's a clear varnish. It's going to seal in all of the hard work that you've done and protect those models and protect that paint job, which is great because Zombicide's a game where you're constantly handling the models. You don't want that paint to chip and wear off. So highly recommended that you don't forget that step. All that's left is to base your models. And with board games, it's not traditional that you base and you, you know, add any basing materials. You absolutely can. But for these, I'm just going to go ahead and very simply paint them in with some black paint and call it a day. Let's take a look at the final results. And there you have it. That's the second installment of Survivors as part of this four-part Zombicide second edition paint set tutorial series. We're speed painting survivors. We're speed painting zombies. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you picked up some tips and tricks along the way to help you speed paint your models back at home. Get them ready for your first game of Zombicide second edition as soon as possible. This would be a great time to go ahead and apply some highlights if you wanted to and pick out some of those base tones just to reinvigorate them a little bit more now that the wash has dried. 
but I still have one more batch of survivors that I have to paint and I want to get these models ready for the tabletop as soon as possible. So I'm going to get right to that before I apply any highlights. Remember the magic in miniature painting is that it can be as simple or as challenging as you'd like it to be, but with a few simple techniques, you're sure to achieve some great results. Remember that the Zombicide second edition paint set is available for pre-order now. It might be in stores by the time you're seeing this video. Go out and pick up a box set for yourself today. I'm Adam with The Army Painter. We'll see you next time.